Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady and Principal Owner of Everett Tax Solutions, where we help you win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday. And when you tune into my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the small business community. All right. So let's talk about this Zelle loophole. Now, there's this post floating around social media. I'm going to get to that. But I want to talk about why that post is here. So one of the things that changed with the one of the recent bills, y'all, I can't keep up with these bill names. I just really can't. But one of the changes is that payment settlement entities like your PayPal, your Stripe, your credit card settlement entities, they are required to now report transactions totaling more than $600 in a year. Okay. Prior to that, you had to cross both the 200 200 transactions and $20,000 threshold before there was any reporting requirement, okay? But now, TICTA, the uh, Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration, studied the 2017 tax returns, and their study found, studies found that there were a whole bunch of people that had 1099K income that were not reporting their income. So one of the things that they, um, they recommended to the IRS is, hey, you need to go after these folks if you expect to close the tax gap. The tax gap is the difference between what is actually owed in taxes and what is actually collected, okay? And right now, our tax cap is pretty big, all right? So, but once this changed, this put people up in arms because first it was, you know, banks were going to have to report any transactions over $600. That got scrapped, all right? But if the payment settlement entities, that stayed. Now, there are some states that are already here. Massachusetts and Vermont are the only two that I know of right off the bat. I'm not sure if there are any other states. But the states that already figured out, we got some money missing, right? And so now everybody's up in arms because they think, oh, they're trying to tax more money. The tax law never changed. The tax law says that you are to report all income, period. End of story. I don't care if it's a nickel. You're supposed to report all of your income. But what changed is the actual reporting requirement. And so that's what has people up in arms. So now let's get to the post. It says, before I get into the loophole, and I saw this on Instagram, y'all. Before I get into the loophole, it's very important to understand that these payment platforms will only send you a 1099K if you are using a business account. How do you know if you have a business account? Open your Cash App. Click on your profile picture. If you have a green building by your name, you have a business account and will be subject to 1099K reporting. If you do not have a green building by your name, then you have a personal account. It will not be subject to 1099K. Now, let me stop right there. A lot of the payment settlement entities like PayPal, for instance, have a friends and family that's supposed to be a peer to peer transfer like, hey, you and I are going out to lunch. You're paying. I'm giving you your half, you know, my half to cover lunch. Okay, that's what these were designed for. But what what was happening is people were using these um, payment settlement entity, the peer to peer that's supposed to be like between friends and family to conduct business. Okay, but if you read the terms of service of these payment settlement entities, it tells you it is against their terms of service to use the the friends and family option to conduct business. Okay, just letting you know. And when people got caught, these payment entities were holding money. And then people got mad. Okay, so the post goes on. Now, what's the loophole? The loophole is to use Zelle. Why? Zelle is a bank transfer system that doesn't meet the definition of a payment settlement entity. So this means that Zelle will not report your income to the IRS or issue you a 1099K. Okay, so I saw this post on Instagram from an influencer in the finance space. The one thing that I have to caution you about for influencers in the finance space, especially when it comes to tax is that a lot of these folks don't have tax backgrounds. They have not taken one tax test, not even the basic tax course, 
but they're out here giving you all of this advice. And so when these influencer influencers are out here loud and wrong, and then their audience takes hold and run with it, it's really hard to put the horses back in the barn. Okay, it's, it's just almost impossible. But this right here is something that is going to land you in trouble. And here's why. If you use Zelle to avoid your income being reported, that is tax evasion. That's it. It's illegal. And this was already happening under the previous laws, right? Because people had multiple payment settlement entity accounts. You have multiple PayPal accounts, you have multiple Stripe accounts and all of that. And you were structuring, meaning that you were looking at your account going, okay, we're getting that close to that 200 transaction, $20,000 mark. Let me go over here and use this account. Okay, that is structuring. And that is illegal because you are intentionally structuring your income to avoid reporting requirements. Again, the law says that you are to report all income. So it doesn't matter how you get the money, whether it's cash, PayPal, Zelle, Carrier Pigeon, whatever, you are supposed to report your income. And then if you do this, you say, okay, well, I'll use Zelle because they're not reporting to the government and you're not reporting the income either. You're breaking the law. And I know it's really, first of all, I get that it's tempting because one, we can't stand paying them transaction fees. Can I tell y'all that nobody likes pay paying these transaction fees? I don't like paying PayPal, Stripe, QuickBooks. I don't like paying none of them but it's the cost of doing business. I don't like paying taxes either. And I'm the tax person. But you know what I like? I like having my kids have good teachers. And so when you all are saying, hey, we need to raise our teacher salaries, guess what? That comes from tax dollars. I also like to have the fire department show up at my house if my house is on fire. But really, nobody likes to pay taxes. But that's the law. Okay? So, um, so I really want you to be careful. And also as a consumer, you know, Zelle has, has, has business, okay? Because my business bank account, I can use Zelle. But also understand that Zelle does not offer you any buyer protections. You're not just going to go and protest to Zelle that you didn't get your product or whatever it was, wasn't delivered. It is what it is because that's really not the purpose of Zelle. Zelle is supposed to be a friends and family, peer-to-peer -peer type uh, money transfer, not for business. But yeah, Zelle, you, my business account has Zelle. And so if someone pays me, you know, they can't go to Zelle and, um, and, you know, and complain like you can with PayPal and dispute the charge because with Zelle, you, the person, are sending the money. And you're not going go to um, go to Zelle and dispute the charge because you have to confirm that, yes, this is, um, the person that I'm sending it to and you know, that's it. You can't go and reverse that. Just, you know, just letting you know. So listen, guys, I understand. <laughs> I understand all, you know, these things out here sound really good. I get it. It sounds really good, but you also have to look at where the, the information is com coming from. Just because someone is out here making multiple seven figures, it does not make them experts on the law. It does not make them a tax expert. It just makes somebody that's really good at selling stuff. That's what it is. So I am telling you now, there is no Zelle loophole that is legal for you to avoid reporting your income. That's no. The only thing that you're doing by using Zelle is trying to avoid the 1099K reporting. 
if you're doing that and you're not reporting this income, that is tax evasion. That is illegal. Tax avoidance, that's legal. This is tax evasion. Tax avoidance is when you take legal deductions to reduce your taxable income. That's tax avoidance. Tax evasion is when you are using methods to skirt reporting requirements and not reporting your income. That's the difference. Okay, so please be clear. You heard it from me. The Zell loophole is not a thing. All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you all next time. Bye guys.